Hallelujah. How many in this room, you want to do great things for God? I mean, you really got a vision to do great things. I, I believe that what I have to share tonight will help you. And uh, I've been, I taught last week about confidence in God. And if we're going to do anything great for God, we have got to have confidence that he is who he says he is. And that he will do what he said he will do. It would be a horrible thing for God to ask us to do something and just leave us at that point. But he equips us. He anoints us. He calls people to walk beside us. God is the way maker in our lives. But he is looking for people that will not look at themselves for their abilities, but they will look to God. I was thinking today, my goodness, when we really stop to think, the King of Kings, the creator of the world, the God of all wisdom, the beginning and the end, the Holy One, lives on the inside of me. We should never come up short of not knowing what to do or not knowing what to say. Because we have the King of Kings, we have the Holy Ghost living. I mean, living. I just wonder, if you cut me open, would you see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Holy Ghost on the inside? He lives within us. The Scripture says, in him I live and I move and I have my being. That means in him I exist. Hallelujah. Confidence. Confidence. And so if we are going to do anything great for God, I truly believe that we have got to have confidence. I wrote this down in my office that confidence is doing the will of God regardless of fear or circumstances. If we want to be used by God, not only do we have to have confidence in him, but we have to have confidence of the God who is inside of me. Amen. The God who leads me and the God who guides me, that no matter what the circumstances are or no matter how people see me, if I am able to make the shift to say, but God, how do you see me? How do you see me? And it may take some others to catch up to see me the way God sees me. But if I have the confidence that what God said about me is true, then, man, it doesn't matter what others think because I choose. We have a choice in the matter. I choose to believe God's word about me over anybody else. I choose to believe that what God put in me is great enough for he designed me for the purposes that he called me to. You are designed for the purpose that God has called you to. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you were still breathing, you were still called. If you are still breathing, you are still called. I am not one of these people that think once you hit 60, 65, 70, life is over for you. Go sit on a chair. I mean, that should be the time you're more active than ever. If you're, if you're not working for the world, now you can work more for the kingdom of God. Praise your Lord. Hallelujah. I want to look at this verse. I want to look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Lord, I thank you that you have a plan for tonight. Lord, you are resurrecting some things. And in order for you to resurrect them, we have to fall into alignment with what you have called us to and what you have said and what you have put in our heart. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. 
It doesn't matter what America looks like right now. It doesn't matter what the world looks like right now. What we say is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How you have designed things, we say no power from hell can resist it. For it shall, say it shall, it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Would you read this with me? Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. One more time. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Verse 36. For you have need of endurance. You have need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Endurance is a big key here. Because if I am going to do the will of God, I, I remember, uh, remember this week I was talking to somebody and I said, the kingdom of God, the ministry of God is not for the weak at heart. You've got to have some backbone. You've got to have some strength. You've got to have some confidence. You've got to have some willpower. And you have to have the ability to shut off every demonic voice, every uh, voice that's coming against what God put in you. You, 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 you have got to have the ability to turn those voices off and say, I hear your voice, Lord. Just what the word says, I hear, I know your voice. I hear your voice. And another, I will not obey. Or another voice, contrary to yours, I will not yield to. Amen? So that after you have done the will of God, you will have endurance to receive it. It takes strength to do the will of God. But it is the most rewarding thing. God wants us to be a success. I remember someone telling me, another pastor telling me, God never made any junk. God never made any junk. And I'm looking at all of you tonight with a pastor's heart. Inside of you, you've got goals, dreams, desires, some things that didn't work out the way you thought that they were, would. But I want you to know God's not done. God is not done. He told us in Joshua, he said, listen, be strong and of a good courage. Amen. So I say that to you, be strong and of a good courage. I think it is so important if you want to be successful and you want to do the will of God, you've got to be very careful of who you surround yourself with. It is really hard to find people that will speak faith. How, you know, I think how many uh, relationships down do we have to go to find somebody that will speak life into you, that will speak life into your ministry? When you have somebody that is real close to you, that knows how to speak faith, you just found an amazing treasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray that that's what we are for one another, that we are able to speak faith and we are able to speak courage and we are able to input confidence into somebody. I, I got to tell you, church, it is so easy to tear somebody down, but it takes work to build them up. It takes work to build them up. And I believe it takes an anointing. It takes the word of God. Because my words to you may make you feel good. But God's word out of my mouth spoken to you will transform you. God's word coming out of my mouth spoken to you will change your situations around. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. And it's all about what are we looking at. I am so thankful for these testimonies tonight because that's the real deal. 
And if God did that for those people, he will do what you have need of. Our God is always faithful, and our God is always on time. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. You know, I can't do anything for God if I truly don't believe that he's who he said he is. Amen. I have got to have the confidence in God. And then after I get the confidence in God, there has to be a transformation on the inside of me for me to have confidence in what God has said about me. I am who the Bible says I am. Amen. Think about it. If we really believe it, I am who the Bible says I am. If that doesn't build your confidence, I don't know what else will. If you just tell yourself, well, what does the Bible say I am? The Bible says I am blessed coming in, and I am blessed going out. The Bible promises that everything I put my hand to, it will prosper. That means it will accomplish the will of God. So I put my hand on the things that God has put in my spirit and in my heart. Hallelujah, I am who he says I am. I am the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I've been purchased by the blood. The trick of the devil was to play with our minds, to play with our thoughts. And what does he tell you? You know, we may declare that we are the righteousness of God, but he is saying everything else. You know, you're just, you're just full of mistakes. But I am so glad that when I say I am the righteousness of God, I believe that that is sending forth all the angels sent to, to us, assigned to me, and it's sending forth the angels and saying, you go fight on Debbie's behalf. You go fight for the ministry that I called her to. Same for you. Same for your grandchildren. Same for your children. Same for your spouses. But I mean, if we really get a hold of, I am who the Bible says I am. The Bible says that I have the favor of God surrounding me like a shield. So I can have confidence because I know I am walking this journey, not on what I've done in myself, but on what God has instilled into me. And he has opened up his word unto me. And so if he said that I'll do this and I'll preach the word of God, all I have to do is give myself to the word of God, give myself to to him and say it is not in my own strength but in yours and I can do what you said I can do amen would you give God praise hallelujah I want you to know that the goal of every enemy in your life is to destroy your self-portrait I'm going to tell you again but we're wise in God, amen. I'm helping you to discern and to know what to do when this junk happens. The goal of every enemy in your life is to destroy. To destroy, destroy your self-portrait of who you are in God. What you can do in God and what you can have. In God. Your confidence in who God made you and your confidence in God and his purpose for you, that is what the enemy is trying to steal. Because if he can stop you from having confidence in how God designed you and what he designed you for, you will sit down and you will hit the pause button. And all of heaven is standing there and saying, what just happened? How could a child of mine, 
the kingdom of God would say, how can a child of mine believe that what I have put in their heart because they haven't seen it is past and it's not coming to pass? How could they believe a lie like that? For I resurrected it by the cross. Everything God's put in your heart, he is resurrecting it fresh and anew tonight. Hallelujah. Some have a desire to be on the mission field, and they see themselves sitting in a chair here at Grandview Church. Can I tell you, missionaries, it ain't done. It ain't done. It isn't done. Come on, give God praise. It isn't done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when sometimes when we're in the waiting time, we tend to get lost. It's like, God, was that just me all, all those years? Was that just me? There's things that I've declared, me and Jamie, and we've seen it in the Spirit. Has it happened yet? No. But it's like I can see it afar off. As long as you keep your eyes on it afar off, you can pull it to you. And when the time, timing of God is right, it will come right before you. And I'm going to encourage you with this, that when it comes, provision will already be there. All you have to do is step into what you've been, believe, been believing for and step into what God has told you shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Say confidence in God. Now, you have been designed for what God has called you to. But the thing the enemy steals is our confidence. And I know some people say, well, if you talk about self-help, you're just talking world. No, we got the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. And every day, we need to be changing. Every day, we need to be saying, Lord, What's in me that is holding me back from success of uh, fulfilling the will of God? What is in me? Uh, every day that we are able to say, God, I lay myself as an open book before you. Yes, I have confidence in you, but Lord, work in me. Work in me so that my thoughts don't go automatically to the negative. Work with me that my eyes don't always see lack, but they see who you, I am in you. Work in me that my mouth doesn't speak contrary to what you have said. Work in me. And too often we are influenced all of our lives by how we grew up, what we saw mom and daddy do or not do. I love my mom and dad. I love my family. I am here today because of my mother. My mother, she knew how to pray. She was a woman of the word, and she knew how to reach heaven for her kids. And she toiled for her kids. I remember going home, and mom would tell me exactly where I've been and what I did. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. My mom knew God. My dad was a Sunday school superintendent. We spent the weekends, truly, we speak, spent the weekends getting uh, Sunday school material together. It was a family affair and praying for the service at hand. I am thankful for my mom because of her and her prayers and standing in the gap. I am here today, and I'm going to ask you, who spoke into your life or who prayed for you or who are you praying for that God's will will come to pass? Praise the Lord. We don't get here on our own. But we could say, you know, uh, self-help, I think it's really important that we're around people that speak life to us. I think it's really important that we read things that cause our faith to grow, that causes us to grow, that will help pinpoint, hey, you've got a negative thread going through here, and you've got to do something about it. You've got to get some spiritual warfare. You've got to get some backbone. You've got to get some confidence, and you've got to say, hey, this is holding me back. I am not going to tolerate this one more day. I'm not going to tolerate this one more night. This thing is going out of my life today in the name of Jesus. 
I told you about fear and doubt and unbelief. Those things are the three bad boys that you got to be sure you do not tolerate. Don't invite them into your house. Don't allow them to sit down at your dinner table. And don't allow those things, fear, doubt, unbelief. Don't allow, allow them to be part of your telephone conversation and part of the inner workings of your heart. Be quick to identify them. Fear, doubt, and unbelief. Come on, say it with me. Fear, doubt, and unbelief. Those are horrible things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 out of the Amplified. It says this. I can do all things. Say it with me. I can do all things. And I put in my notes which he's called me to. Everything God has called me to, I can do. All right? Let's read the rest of it. I can do all things through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. Amen? I think that one's just a little bit different than what I have. But I'll, I'll, let's read this, and then I'll read your mind. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. This one that I have, it could be the, the classic version, but it says, I can do all things through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength and confident peace. Peace brings, or confidence brings peace. When things are, are tolling on the inside, you need just to stop and say, why have I lost my peace? Why? Don't ever tolerate your peace being stolen. But to stop and say, where did my peace go? When did my peace go? And you make a demand from, uh, from God in prayer that you walk in peace 24-7, peace belongs to you, and that whatever is unsettling you, we bring it before the throne of God, and we leave it there, and we walk away and say, I am sufficient in my God. I am equal, and I am ready to anything. Amen? So we declare that I'm confident in my faith, and I'm bold in my God purpose. Would you say that with me? I am confident in my faith, and I am bold in my God purpose. Uh, there's a gentleman, Keith, Dr. Keith Johnson, and he has written some books on confidence, and we've had these around the house for a long time. But this is something, an uh, excerpt from his book that I want to read to you. It says, when you concentrate on your weaknesses... You lose confidence and self-respect. Your greatest rewards in life will come from the re rewards of focusing on your strengths. If you spend too much time focusing on your weakness, all you end up with is a lot of strong weaknesses. He goes on to say it keeps you average. Champions focus on their strengths. They never magnify their weaknesses. Champions know what to ignore and what to focus on. Champions focus on tomorrow instead of the past, the possibilities instead of the pain, and the rewards instead of the risk. I'm at a place, you know, where um, I'm believing that I will live to I'm um, 100 years old, but I want to be uh, full of life. I want to be walking health and healing all my days. I want my mind to be strong. I don't want to be 100 and not know I'm 100. And I got a witness out there, anybody? I would have thought you all would have raised your hands. 
You know, I want to know what's going on in life. I'm going to take care of myself. But I truly, with everything in me and in Jamie's heart, I want to be busy about kingdom business until I take my last breath and I find myself standing before the king of glory. Amen. I want God to use me. And I've got to know that I can do all things, no matter what the situation is, no matter what my age is. I can do all things. I can do all things. Say that to yourself. I can do all things. Now, I want you to really say it to yourself. I can do all things. Hallelujah. We've got to be sure to focus on our strengths. There's been people that want to sing, and they can't carry a tune for nothing. But they want to sing. They see themselves up here with their microphone singing with all of their heart. And Jamie wants to sing. Later, honey. I'll come back to you. Amen. But, you know, and instead of people realizing or that person realizing they have all these other strengths, they can do all these other things. What happens is they focus on the one thing that they really can't do well. And instead of focusing on the strengths, they focus on the one negative thing in their life, and they try to resurrect that. They try to birth it. They try to use it. Come on, teacher, just believe that I can and I can. Sometimes we're not called to some things. We're not called to everything. But I want to speak to you tonight. Focus on your strengths. God has placed many strengths in you and many strengths in me. And, I, and the enemy is always quick to show us where in our minds we fail short. But in the kingdom of God, you know, in the kingdom of God, time is of the essence. I just heard that in my spirit. In the kingdom of God, time is of the essence. So don't spend all your trying time trying to be what God never created you to be. Come on, you can give God a hand for that. My sister is the best cook. I mean, when Gail does something, she does it to the absolute uh, top of excellence, delicious, and all of that. You come to my house. <laughs> Carla saying, poor Pastor James. You come to my house. I'm going to open up the freezer, and I'm going to say there's turkey tetrazzini there. You know, <laughs> Carla. Yes. Jamie said, sing, baby, sing. <laughs> Cooking is not my deal. I have got tons of cookbooks that I could go and, and open up the cookbook and, and make something. Hopefully, I could follow the directions. But I got to tell you, that would be the most boring thing in the world for me because when I'm done, I'm stuck with a messy kitchen. I've got all those dishes to clean up. And Jamie says, well, a meal is a meal. What else are we going to do? And I'm like, I just worked that hard. Now, my sister is gifted. She cooks. She bakes. She knows how to do it well. But when she comes to my house, she knows that if she wants to eat well, the job is hers. <laughs> I'll love on her, and we'll have a good time, but that's her job. See, we've got to realize who we are and rejoice in who we are. Amen? Amen. That we rejoice when you can look at yourself and say, girl, guy, you were created in the image of God. And the things you love, you love them because God designed you for that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, that just shakes a whole bunch of junk off of us, doesn't it? Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. I desire 
to do what he needs me to do. See, that's why confidence is so important. Because if you wait for somebody to pat you on the back and say, okay, I believe in you, you can do it, probably you'll doubt everything they tell you. Isn't it true? When people try to build you up, what do we usually say? Oh, you're just saying that. You're just saying that. But whatever you are called to do, mechanic, give me some other things that you all do. Insurance, a nurse, a doctor, teacher, whatever it is that you are called to do, confidence will make you be the very best at what you do. Confidence will make you be the very best. When you have true confidence, you have it in God. And because God is in you, you've got the confidence. You will be determined to be the best in your area. You will be determined to be the best that you can be. Why? So that he can be glorified. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I tell myself, I, Debbie, you are what the Bible says you are. Debbie, you can do what the Bible says you can do. It doesn't matter how many people you have seen failed. I got to tell you, do you think it's easy being a woman preacher? Come on. Do you think it's easy? All right, I, I want to hear y'all. I'll tell you what to say. No. Do you think it is easy being a woman preacher? I have stood right here, and the moment I get up to preach, I've watched people walk out the door. I've received emails, women shouldn't be preaching. I've received it all. But you know what? They didn't call me. They didn't call me. And they don't have to stand before the Lord and give an account for the call of God upon my life. And all I... I've learned, first I used to get hurt, then I used to stand here and doubt myself, but after a little bit and having a husband like I have that says, get up there and preach, girl. He has said that over and over, get up there and preach, girl. After that, I have learned to say, if I see somebody leaving, you, you're just missing it. You've just missed the blessing, sir. Woman, you just missed a blessing. I know in whom I have been called. And so I am full of confidence. Does it mean that I stop growing? Absolutely not. But one thing, would you stand with me? One thing is for sure. I am not going to allow any voice, anybody to stop what God has birthed, to stop what God has said. Jose, you have a desire for the mission field. You don't let anybody say anything else, but that you're on your way. Amen. Pastor Whiney, you don't let anybody say anything else, but you are on your way. What God has called us to do, we will do if we don't lack confidence. So my confidence is in him. And it is in me according to the relationship I have. Now, I do got to say this. Nobody can, can make you feel insecure, treat you bad, deal with, uh, play games with your head unless you allow them. Unless you allow them. Praise God. I'm going to look for one quote I have here. And it is good. It is really good. Confidence is an internal awareness that regardless of what is thrown at me, I can handle it. It's a pioneering spirit, and it's not easily shaken. And so true confidence comes from the inward out. And when I am absolutely convinced that God said I can, you know what? I am absolutely convinced that I will do what God says I can do. I am absolutely convinced I will go where God has called me to go. I will do what he has called me to do. And you know what? He is so faithful that it's not at the last moment God begins preparing uh, the journey for me. He is preparing me for the journey that has already been placed before me. Hallelujah. Have 
confidence in God. Don't throw away your confidence. Don't let anybody manipulate you. When you don't have confidence, you can be easily manipulated. But when you have confidence and you know, and you're not asking anybody else, what has God said for you? You are asking the Holy Ghost. You're asking God. You're asking the Holy Ghost, and you're receiving it by confirmation. Yes, some will confirm it, but you don't, you don't base what you're going to do depending on what people say. Have you heard from God? Have you heard from God? Have you heard from God? If you have heard from God, you put your shoes on, and you get ready to start moving with God because God is not sitting there waiting for when the day appears. God has already created. God has already created the path for you. God has already created the relationships for you. I'm going to tell you, in God's book, it is already done. Would you give him praise? Hallelujah. In God's book, it is already done. In God's heaven, you are already doing it. You know, this message applies to ministry, it applies to family, it applies to work, it applies to every situation. You have and you hold on to your confidence because it will cause you to have endurance to see the promise. Amen. Would you give the Lord praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Honey, come and close us. God is good. Amen. Say, I have confidence in God. Hallelujah. And I have confidence how he designed me for his will. Amen. 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 The girl can preach. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And that's exactly what she's like at home. I'll say, baby.